Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Build with Ben. And so for those who are new, my name is Ben. I'm a the View Core team, Nuxt ambassador, Google developer expert, web technologies and map platform, and just do a lot of things on web things. And uh, yeah, happy to be here because today what we're going to do on this show is we're going to talk about Nux 3. And I thought we would change pace a little bit and actually build a MVP Trello clone. So that's kind of the plan for today. So let me see, as a quick overview, let me see, how do I want to do this? It's much trickier when you only have one monitor, I gotta say. All right, here we go. Switching over to live stream, boom. All right, so here we go. So for those who haven't used Nuxt before, basically it's a meta framework for Nuxt and view, the Nuxt 3 actually recently came out, the public beta that is. And so as always, I want to caveat the stream, letting you know that the stuff we're doing here today is based on the public beta. In other words, not necessarily ready for production yet. That's when the stable release will happen. I assure you when the stable release happens, there will be lots of fanfare about it. I will certainly be announcing it here on the stream as well. But if you want like the minute to minute update, I think Twitter is honestly probably the best place to get that kind of update. But then otherwise, yeah, I will keep you all posted from there. Let's see, actually, you know what I got to do? I realized because of my single monitor setup, I need to open up Twitch on my phone because I need a way to see what y'all are saying. Uh, let's see. All right. There we go. Excellent. All right. Very good. Okay. So we have Nux Meta Framework, basically a opinion and way to use Vue. And then for those who haven't used it before, Trello, oh, I, I, I don't really care for that when they do that, to be honest. I like when they're able to show you the homepage rather than redirecting you to the user page. If I want to do that, I'll, I'll click it. But basically, it's a Kanban board that got really popular. I, got, I can't remember when it was released, but it got really popular for its kind of simple, intuitive nature. I think it got acquired by Atlassian. So that's basically um, where it lives now. But the high level of it here is that what we're going to do is we're going to build a MVP of it. In other words, we're, we're going to be avoiding a lot of the styling and that kind of stuff. But what I want to do is see how far we can push Nux3 to do a basically an MVP clone of Trello. And then from there, we can uh, just kind of go from there. And so, yep, so Crash Dudo here. I'm using Nux3 production ready app for a hobby project. So that's just it. If you're using Nux3 on a you know hobby project that you have full control over and you're totally aware of its risks, then I think that's where it's one of those like, have fun, go nuts. I think the reason why we do the Nux3 warning in terms of production ready is because a lot of enterprise clients or people who where they people are relying on basically a hundred percent uptime and like as little bugs as humanly possible. That's where we want to be a little bit more careful with uh, the experimentation there. So we don't want to mislead any customers who might be uh, looking for that level of reliability. So, but otherwise hobby projects, uh, uh, you know, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if over the next coming months, a lot of people are already using public, the public beta for their hobby projects and stuff underneath, and then basically getting ready so that when stable release comes out, they can use all of their lessons learned to apply that over to, to the actual, like, you know, sort of enterprise Nux3 stuff. With that said, let's go ahead and let's let's just kick it off. Let's dive right in. Why are we wait? All right. So first thing first, I need to go ahead and create a new Nux3 project. So the way we're going to do that is going to do npm init. Oh, wait. Is it npm create? Oh, npx nuxy. That's what it is. So npx basically um, is like another version of npm, but just like allows you to import or use like someone else's software from what I understand. Nuxy, we're going to init a new project and we're going to call it Nux3 Trello MVP. That's what I'm going to call it. I think that should work. We're going to install Nuxy. That's fine. So Nuxy is the new Nux CLI that's coming down the pipe. So Nux3 Trello MVP. Great. That's initialized. Let's go ahead, repo, and let's create it. Oh, wait, let's initialize the repo first. And then, ooh, I do want to change it. So this is, by the way, I'm working off the new MacBook Pro 14 inch M1 Max. And so a lot of things still aren't fully configured. So let's go ahead and actually let's create the init default branch to main instead. And so branch M main, perfect. And then from here, we'll go ahead and create, it'll be this, don't worry about the description, public, yes. Excellent. Awesome. All right. And with that, let me just add this git commit feature scaffold nux3 MVP or nux3 app git push. Let me just copy this. That should do the trick. 
Excellent. All right. So let's bum. Let's see. Let's start by running the dev. Oh, what do I need to install? Okay, yes, I need to install. Oh, okay, great question from Crash Dudo here. How do I commit by each feature or when you are done? So I'm personally a big fan of what I'll call micro commits. So the moment I make an iteration on a feature, then that's something that I'll basically commit and rather than sort of bundling everything together, because I feel like the git commit log is useful for when you're trying to undo changes or more importantly, you wanna like pinpoint down why a change was made at a specific time. And when you sort of bundle up a bunch of different features or fixes into one commit, it sort of loses that. Like, I think the most egregious form of this that I've seen in an actual like uh, production code base is git, commis git commit messages where they're just like code change. Like that's all they wrote. And then that's about as useful as putting nothing in there because of course, if you're committing something, something has changed. But you know, the question is why and um, I think a lot more people are using the type prefix. So whether it's like feature, a, a bug fix, you know, stylistic, chore, that kind of stuff. There's a whole series on that. And I could probably do a whole stream on that, to be honest. And so my belief is that like, once you've committed something that's of value, even if it's a small iteration, I honestly just commit that with why I made the change. Uh, and I try not to do bundling as much as possible so that my commit history has this sort of like storytelling. Oh, luck dude. Yes, there actually will be a recording of this. We're actually uh, testing it out. But if you go to youtube.com slash Ben Kozen, you'll find all the recordings of the Twitch streams there. And yeah, so you no worries about not being able to stay for the stream. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, yeah, we'll, I guess I'll see you in the recording. All right, so what have we done? We've installed stuff, answered some questions. And oh, and so actually to finalize my answer to Crash Dudo here. In terms of like, if I have like a large feature though, I would say, so obviously if you have like a main branch and a bunch of people working together, that's when I will definitely basically branch off the main code branch. And then from there I'll build like a feature like, to be honest, let's go and practice that for this code base and show you what, like how I would typically collaborate. So right now we've initialized the main branch and this not really, oh, let me add this. So git commit config add package lock. All right, so this is like probably what we typically have for most people starting out. And so, you know, someone would clone and check it out. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. So let's npm run dev. All right, so as you can see, that started up real fast, which was super nice. So let me go ahead and, oh, I forgot. I'm in Raycast now, so I need to do two thirds. First two thirds, oh, perfect. And this one is going to be one third, 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 last third. There we go. Okay. I need to get some hotkeys for that because I had some stuff for that. So, okay. So I think that notification was for a follow. I still need to get how all those things. So whoever just followed, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I need, yeah, I need to figure out how to get those things to pop up on my screen, but one thing at a time. Uh, again, really appreciate y'all. Okay. So we have this here and then we have this at 3000. There we go. Look, we have our Nux doc here. Excellent. All right. So first thing first, again, we have about, we have less than an hour now to get this running. I'm gonna see how far I can push this. I'm, I'm actually fairly confident we can go pretty far with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside of this project, shall we? So I'm gonna open up, let's see, Nux3 MVP, and let's go ahead and open that. Excellent, yes, trust all authors. All right, we have app.view here, most welcome, excellent. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and start building stuff out. So, okay, if this were, again, let's treat this like a real project. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start by doing a uh, homepage. It's gonna be the branch we're working on. And let's, let's start working, just that simple. So let's see, we're gonna have a folder for pages and then we'll have index.view and then I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's see, we're gonna say the single file component h1 of home page and then just to make sure all this works let's see we're going to delete app.view and then i think that's it so now if i go and open up there we go home page is up and running this is a test save excellent so now we have our home page scaffold so let's go ahead and take a look quick look at what a typical home page is so it looks like on Trello, once, assume, basically once you've logged in, this is probably what you'll get. We're not gonna worry about authentication for this. We're basically focusing on features. So basically we see here, there's like a recently viewed, and then we have like workspaces, and then that's it. Okay, so no, my based on my familiarity with Trello, basically we have the ability to create 
boards within workspaces. So they're they're so what we can do basically here is honestly from this point on we can just save this because that's basically all we need from this point, and we could just need to be able to click on workspaces going forward. So honestly, this is a complete feature right here. We have successfully added the MVP of homepage. So I would say add homepage. And then after that, we would do typically, you know, like a pull request and then go ahead and merge that. And then from here we go. Excellent. Our homepage is now merged into the branch. Now, next feature, we have a homepage. We need to be able to actually look at workspaces. So let's do uh, workspaces, workspace pages is what we're going to do next. So that's our next branch. And so here, now we're going to take a think about how we're going to do this. So basically, users will have the ability to, one, uh, create a workspace. So let's save that. And then they'll be able to see all their existing workspace. So we'll do a V for workspace in workspace list, key of workspace.id. And then we'll just say workspace.name for now. And then that doesn't exist yet for those wondering. So let's go ahead and use the script setup block real quick here. And let me just import ref from view. And then we'll do a workspace list, which will be an array of different objects where we have key, or where we have the ID. I'll just do one, two, three, and then a name of test. And then we'll just go ahead and copy that here with two, three, four. And then we'll call this experiment. So that's that, that's that. That should go here. If we save, everything broke. Why did it break? Here we go. Excellent. So we have create a workspace. And then what we really should do is allow people to really create it. We'll add a text that's a V model to new workspace name. So then we'll say const new workspace name is a ref that's just a string. And then every time they click it, we're going to say create workspace, which is a function where workspace list dot value it basically because it's an array, we're going to push an object where the ID is going to be a random number. So let's see, const random ID equals math dot floor math dot random. And then I think I think you need to put the length in this. I'm just going to put a hundred, no, wait, wait, zero to one times a hundred. I think that'll do it. And then this will be a random ID. This will be a late name. It's going to be new workspace name dot value. And then, oh, I have questions. I will get to the questions. Give me one sec. I'm just burning through this. So what did it not like workspace any? value ts what did it not like it seems like it's okay but it's not happy with something hang on did i mess something up is it rand no it should be math.random that is correct it did not like this hang on that's good const random id equals math.floor math random ah, javascript math random i thought i did that right yeah, math.random. What did it not like about it? Times max, get random in. Yeah, math.floor, math.random. Oh, what is it not like? It is pointing at here, object, raise, node modules, parser, missing semicolon. What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. there we go. I had an extra parentheses. Thank you, Axie. All right, there we go, that's good. Create workspace. And actually, just for sake of display, let's go ahead and do the workspace.id. And then here we go. Save that. There you go. One, two, three, two, three, four. And then if we click on said button, that will create said workspace. Save. So now we can say ramen, create workspace. There we go. New one. All right, excellent. So we have an ID, we have a name, we have the ability to click on one. Um, so this is good. And so just for a little bit of styling though, just so we can have workspace card, then we'll say workspace card here will be display block border, say 2px solid. Again, let's keep it simple. So this will be black border radius four pixels. And let's do a padding of two rem all around. 
So if we save that and refresh, hey, there we go. And then we can just add a margin bottom of one rem, save. Okay, excellent. Oh, wait, hold up, padding left zero. Oh, wait, not the padding left zero. That's, it's the li that needs the help. So, oh, wait, but then, ah, I know what it is. Class workspace list. So workspace list, margin left zero, padding left zero, save. Wow, really doesn't like the styling, but that's okay. Test, there we go, boom, 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 boom. Excellent. All right. So we have this, we have the ability to create workspaces. Okay, let's take a look at the quick questions here. So Craft Judo, ah, great question here. Do we have, have I configured TypeScript for this project? Well, if I'm not mistaken, TypeScript actually doesn't need to be configured. That's kind of the beautiful part about Nux. I think if you just use it, it will work. So you know what, let's do that quick test. So. We've done, okay, so now we can implement the commit methodology that I was talking about. We basically created a way for users to create workspaces, right? We don't have like any like, like there's no sustained data model yet. We could use like IndexedDB or something for that, but that's another, um, a problem for another time. So all I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna commit this and say feature ability for users to create a workspace card. That's basically all we did. Now we're talking about adding TypeScript. So I believe all I need to do is lang ts, and already we're gonna see some stuff yelling at us. So for example, id here is no idea what it is. So now that we're in this, how would we do this? Well, we know for a fact that this object here is gonna be the type of workspace. So by the way, even if you don't know TypeScript, um, again, I'm someone who's avoided and I, I would say, I'm not like a hardcore TypeScript user, but I'm starting to see the benefits of it. So my belief is, is learning how to sprinkle it. So if you're fault, don't worry about following along. I got you. Okay, so we have a type, or actually this is technically an interface because they're an object, but we would call it like workspace, right? So workspaces contain what? They contain an ID, which is gonna be for now, we're just gonna say it's a number. And then in addition to a number, they will also have a name, which will be a string. And so what I believe we can do here is inside of workspace list, we can make this an array of workspace like that. And that should still work. Okay, so what just happened here? What we did was we told that this ref here, the, the view reference, that it takes, so this is um, what I, do, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is called typecasting, where you're basically telling it like later on that like, hey, this is gonna be the type you're going to be. And so the type that the ref is expecting is a workspace, but an array of workspaces, hence this symbol right here. That's um, basically what's happening here. And so what it's doing is basically defining the shape of data that's gonna be inside. So if right now I decided to go like, well, I'm gonna type whether it's you know public, and that's gonna be like true, you can see here that the the editor is already telling me like, hey, by the way, this doesn't actually exist inside of what you're saying it should be, which is this workspace type right here. And so if I wanted to do that, what I would do is I would go like whether it's public or not, and I would be like, this is a Boolean. And then now you can see now all the errors have resolved itself. And so again, I'm not a hardcore TypeScript fanatic, but you can see this is actually useful This to me, this level of TypeScript, where it's almost more documentation than it is sort of like being super restrictive as far as like letting you know that like this is kind of what you expect. So right now, if random ID, right, if we just go ahead and comment this out real quick, and we said let random ID equals my random one, two, three, save, you'll notice, here we go, look, take that, uh, check it out. You're trying to assign a string into what should be a number. And so little things like that, this is where I think it's just enough typing that it's actually pretty useful. And so to, um, so to crash Dudo's question, as you can see here, there wasn't any additional configuration I did to make TypeScript work with Nuxt. Then that's really important, the key thing with the Nuxt 3 right now, because for other like Vue 2, Nuxt 2, arguably even Vue 3 and Vite, you do kind of have to tell the bundler that like, hey, by the way, I plan on using TypeScript, so include it. But I like that Nux 3's opinion here where it's like, look, we're going to set up the default area for you. If you don't use it, don't worry. We're not going to ship it. It's not going to slow you down. But if you do use it, it's already there for you. No additional configuration needed. So that's super exciting. Okay, so to be honest, I'm going to leave the TypeScript just because I think it's 
fairly straightforward, although why is key not like... Oh, it doesn't like the fact that it's not assignable to key. Ah, because the ID is a number. That's really interesting because it's expecting a string. See, that's the kind of thing you might might not might miss. And so maybe what I should do is just uh, string. How do we stringify? Is it two string string like this? Ah, JavaScript. I don't typically two. I think it's two string. Object type to string. Oh, okay. I had that right to begin with. So maybe like this. But now we have to switch this type. And now I think our errors are happy. I don't know. And so this is an example of why people sometimes don't like typing. It's because then you get these random errors that you don't totally understand. So I'm not sure why the key is unhappy right now. But regardless. All right, I'm just going to undo it then. I'm going to leave it back to the number. And then I'll, don't worry, I won't worry about that error. Okay, so then let's go ahead and, and go ahead and, this is to me technically a refactor because we haven't really changed any code. We just kind of made it a little bit cleaner. Use TypeScript to in home page. Great. All right. Excellent. Great. So question from Thesis here in the chat. Have you tried Storybook with Veet? Unfortunately, I have not. Honestly, I will add that as, you know, what am I saying? Here is this. Let's take so let's see. Thesis as about storybook with Vite. All right, so that's my note for later on when I'm reviewing to check uh, that out later. Because honestly, once I check that out and I do, if it is working as I hope, then honestly, there probably will be a build with Ben episode on it. So that said, all right. Let's keep going. Okay, so we have the ability to create workspaces, right? So here's my ah, I want to be able to. Okay, so here's an example, right? I want to be able to hit enter rather than clicking on the button. And so all I'm going to do is on this input field, I'll listen to a key up of enter. And then on that, I will run the same function for create workspace. So to show you that works, I hit enter. There's apple, bananas, cherries. Excellent. And then all we need to do now, to be honest, to make sure, so let me see, I had the ability to hit enter. So that's a feature. I'm just going to commit that. So you see that? Just that one feature. I'm not going to... I'm not going to get in a rabbit hole that's talking about clearing the input. That's a separate thing. So we're going to go ahead and say, all right, that's my change. So this is the feature a user can hit enter key to create workspace. And then one more thing, because I noticed it, is that when we create the workspace, we want to go ahead and zero it out. So new workspace name dot value should be, again, a reset into an empty string. So we test. You see that? Apple, everything's reset. That's great. So that itself is also a feature. I don't think that was a bug. Again, you could consider it a bug, but I think it's a feature. Reset new workspace name on input automatically. There you go. Clear. That is it. Now, we're not quite done yet. Oh, okay. I see from Crash Dudo. Oh, I'm so glad that the videos are helpful. Uh, yeah, please, again, whether you're following along or keep asking your questions. And uh, let's see. Oh, you said that Git series covers... You know what? Well, there you go. All right, so we have from crash dudo here git series on best practices sounds good yeah i will totally i can totally do that yeah because i have some basic because my total philosophy on learning things to be honest is using the most relevant thing that gives you the maximum it's called the uh, what i i call the maple principle uh, so again just for sake of maple so like so just like this so it stands for maximum power for least effort. <laughs> I'm a big believer in this basic principle for uh, not only learning things, but sort of sort of learning and teaching in general, right? And so, yeah, I'm totally happy to do a series on that. Thank you for asking. And as you have other ideas during your journey and have questions, please uh, let me know. Okay, so we have this and this, but now we actually need to actually dive into a workspace based on this ID. So what we're gonna do here now is we have the ability to create so, okay, so now that we have this, we need to be able to go to the actual workspace page. The way we're going to do that is we're going to have a series a uh, folder for workspace and inside the folder, it will get an ID, a specific ID. And so in order to check this out, let me see one, let's go ahead and make this an SVC. I'm not going to skip, let's skip the TypeScript on this workspace number hundred, save. And so if this works the way I think it will, right now we go to workspace slash 100, nothing works. 
that's not great. Workplace slash 100 did not like it. Do -do 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 -do. Why did it? Why is it not happy? Let me do a new file test.view and then h1 test. So here, if we do workspace slash test, does not like that either. Let me go ahead and where's my, I believe I actually have it running in a different one. So let me close that, huh? Do, 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 nope, this is the right one. Do, 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 do. I need to close that. Okay, so is it working? All right, now it's totally gone, that's fine. So first two thirds, here we go. And then if we npm run dev, there we go. It's building. Okay, test works now. And then if I do 100, 100 does not work. Okay, so this is where we kind of need to go a little bit on the documentation here. So v3 nux, we're going to do docs. We're going to talk about pages. Oh, they changed it. Oh, okay, they changed it. It used to be an underscore. It looks like now it is a square bracket okay that would explain why my thing is not working so what we're going to do here to, sh to prove that that worked is we're going to swap this out and we're going to rename it to this save okay now if we go here and refresh there we go workspace 100 okay so that's um new thing here with the brackets not let me see, do I like the ID better? I mean, the brackets probably expose other functionality that I saw briefly in the docs, but here we go. Let's go ahead and see something real quick. It looks like we get the route params dot group, which is pretty great. So inside of here, I wonder how do I get the route params from it without to do 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 because it probably comes from a global export. So the question is, how do I get that? Parent.view, child.view. Okay, so hang on. So we take a look at this pages. I want to grab the, see route params.group. This is good. Okay, so to show you this works, sorry. To show you this works, what I'm talking about here. We'll go here, not here, we'll go here. And if I go ahead and drop this right here, we should see that 100 shows up. And then if I switch this to 80, this appropriately occurs. But what I wanna do though, just to show you, um, is that I wanna be able to pull the ID here. And I don't think it's just gonna be globally available to me. I'm pretty sure this is gonna break. So yeah, route was not defined. Of course it's not defined because it's not a global property. So I'm almost curious. Okay, so the easiest thing for me is to skip the composition API because there's no documentation on that just yet. If I do export default on mounted and then I log the global route here and refresh, route is not defined. Mount, maybe, no, mounted should have it. What's going on? The route is showing up here. That's so clear. Why is it not liking this? Route params. Route is not defined. There's no global route that's automatically imported in the options. Okay, so we're a little more stuck. Let's take a look at use composables from app. Is it like use route from app? Is there, I'm missing something. I know I'm missing something. Integrates view router. All right, so route syntax, programmatic navigation, router push. The thing is, oh, there's probably an abstraction here that I'm missing. I do want to be able to grab that. Oh, this is stopping me. You state, you state, const foo, use foo, auto import composables and use auto imports. Ba -bum -bum -bum. Okay, no, we're going to go farther than this. Okay, so I'm clearly missing something on this part. So let's, once again, let's go to last third, 
Let's go to two thirds. Okay. Whoops, that's not what I want. Last third. Oh, maybe this dot route. Noob dev. You might be right. First two thirds. This dot dollar sign route params. Okay. If that's that is you are probably right. Ha 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 ha. Yes, thank you, noob dev. Totally forgot. Right, options API. We are in the this context. Okay, that's all I need. Okay, because then we have the params for this. Then, okay, here's where this gets a little bit trickier. We need to be able to not only show the ID, we theoretically want to also pull the name, right? So this means that we need the ability to store things. So I'm going to just create a little store here for now. And we'll just call this global.js. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do, 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 do. All right, this workspace list. All right, this is going to be a little bit funky. Consp workspace list, import, let me, let me hide that to make it easier to read, from view, and then export default object workspace list. Okay, hopefully this works as intended. Delete the typecasting right now. Then we're gonna go to index view, delete that real quick. Don't even worry about the TypeScript. We're actually gonna remove that for a second because what I wanna do is import from, is it not gonna autocomplete for me? Go back one from there, then go to store and go to global.js. And inside of here, we should get workspace list. From here, save. We go back to the home page, test. That did not like it. Export route handling, I'm not worried about that. Does not provide an export name. Your hands are playing with a keyboard. Is it a mechanical keyboard? No, this is the built-in MacBook uh, Pro keyboard, actually. I, I did this before and this bit me. Export default. I don't know, I keep messing this up to be totally honest. Okay, export const like this. Maybe if I do it like this. All right, save, refresh, see if it yells at me again. Let's drop that to the bottom, test, enter. Oh, okay, that's good. Apple, okay, I can work with this because the reason why I'm saying this is it means that now that things are in this, if I, okay, 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 here's where my brain's going. Now that I have something in the store that's saving all my list of items, I can, when I click on this, okay, so here we go, Here, follow me. Let me show you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I got this, I got this, I got this. When they click on it, we want to actually go to, we're gonna do this, let's see, Nux link. Let me hide the sidebar so it's easier for y'all to see. So save that, Nux link to, what are we binding to? It is a string, we're going to slash workspace slash and we're gonna to go to workspace.id. All right, so if this works as intended and I click, we'll see that it says workspace slash 43. Okay, so if I refresh that, 43 does come into play, but the reason this should be powerful though is because if we go inside of the ID and this time I will import, what is it? I'll just say global store from, back one more, then store global.js. I can say that inside of the setup method, I'm going to go ahead and do, do, do console, whoops, console.log global store. And we take a look at that and refresh. Oh no, it does not provide a default. Okay, fine, 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 fine. So you said that a workspace list, workspace list dot value refresh ID 43. Okay, that's great. Although, no, 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 no. That's not that great. Oh, the proxy is right. This is right. This is right. This is right because when we go from the home page, which doesn't have anything right now, if I do test and then I click, now we should see there is a proxy here. But if I refresh, everything gets reset. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm going to barrel down layouts default.view, sfc, 
And then I think we discovered last time that it's basically, we can say this is the div, and then there is the slot in here. And to show that this works, we're gonna add a little paragraph. It says default layout, save, if we refresh. Do I need to restart the server? I'm just gonna restart it just on the safe side. And then, ha, default layout here. So now if my default layout's here, I can quickly scaffold a UI nav, and then this will be a Nux link to the home page, just like that. And we click on it, it goes, does not go home, did not terribly like that. We're gonna figure out why shortly. But then here, this is the test, this is the click, and then it did not like component inside non-root element that can be animated. Yeah, I'm not terribly concerned about that. Is that because ID has, okay, fine. So there's that and that. Drop that, save. Does this also have, uh, yes, this also needs to be wrapped in a div for now. So there we go. So jump that, reset the, ooh, what did I do? One, I think I, Okay, I, I did like a manual zoom, which is weird, but okay, here we go, home, test, there you go, 38. Okay, proxy, here we go. So I fixed a couple of things doing this. So let me go ahead, I, I definitely need to do a quick commit here. So first of all, we added a layout view feature at default layout, and then, all right, that's good enough for now. All right, so the reason this is important now is because we actually can keep track of what's inside of here. So if we go back home and then we say like Apple 94, you see that we get the ID from the route. That's exactly what we want, right? So inside of here, slash 94. And then, but what we want to do is we want to actually fetch the actual, do, 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 con oh, I think I know what it is. Okay, hold up. Log, sorry, I'm jumping the gun on a couple of things. We'll see this real quick. All right, so if I refresh this page, we get the ability to see the context proxy target target props and oh wait no it gets two things get props and context like this so here we go context here context gets adders events proxy target context slots uh, emit adders Nope, that's not where this is. Oh wait, this dot route, this dot route does not exist. You know what, that's totally fine. Okay, got it. So again, this is coding under time pressure. Let's, okay, noob dev. So this is recorded with the camera of the laptop. Yes, this is the built-in camera, believe it or not. This is the 1080p MacBook Pro camera. I haven't done anything. The only thing you're getting feedback on differently is the audio. And that is this sure mic right here but everything else that you're hearing, like this is just the MacBook Pro all on itself. So noob dev, you might, you might be losing your mind in that regard. Yeah, this, this, is, this is just a normal camera. I didn't bring any camera equipment because I wanted to see the limits of this. So, okay, it's fine. I don't know how to do this purely in the setup context just yet, but what we can do though is basically export, not even deep, we should return an object called workspace list. And so if this works the way I think, I should be able to log this workspace list here and not even do that, just like that. And so if we clear that and refresh, great. So we have a proxy here with the target length array. Is it what I think it is? Workspace comma, it is. But workspace list, interestingly enough, does not have, oh, it doesn't have anything in there because I refreshed the page. That makes sense. Apple, bananas, open. Workspace proxy does have stuff inside of it. Excellent, okay. So the reason this is, I'm saying this is because then what we can do is for now, because I can't think of it immediately and I'm shorter on time today, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to set the workspace name. So I'm gonna say workspace name. It is currently empty, but because we can basically now share that, we can basically say dot workspace name is equal to this dot workspace list dot find where the workspace for every workspace we're looking for the one where workspace dot id is equivalent to this dot route dot params 
just like that. So if this works the way I hope it would, we're just gonna fingers cross this one. We're gonna say workspace name right here. And then the ID we'll put here inside of parentheses like this. And then we'll say works. Technically, actually, we just do route.params.id, although I would prefer to do that a little bit cleaner. So if we save that and then check it out. Okay, something slightly wrong here is because it did not this that workspace list dot find workspace name. Why did it not like the do 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 do? This dot workspace name exists. This dot workspace list we have. I mean, it is a proxy, but I do I have to really unbox it? That would be really odd if that's the case. I'm just gonna say it. Cannot read properties of find. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yep, Apple, click. Do I have my view dev tools on? Oh, I haven't installed it on this machine yet. Log this dot workspace list. Okay, let's try this again. Apple, click. Proxy is here. And then the ID should equal the route. Oh, you know what? I bet route params is not, is a string. Bet. I totally think that params is a string. Oh, it's an object? Oh, it's even worse. Because um, workspace ID is totally a number right now. And so, of course, that wouldn't be a thing. So if I did this, would that fix my problems? Let's see. Not a number. What? Oh, 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 I'm so silly. Yep. I am silly. Okay, okay, okay. So I don't even need number. I forgot. This is what I needed. Ah, I broke stuff. Hold up. Ah, womp. Apple, click. Oh, it didn't totally work, which is totally fine because this.params.id didn't match because I'm doing the type equivalent. Now the type equivalent is here, then it's more like this. And then that's my find, find it, then I get the name, right? Isn't that what I called it? I called it that name. Yes, I did. So if I call that works space name and refresh, this should work. Click 19, still doesn't like it. Oh, I had it just as, oh, I'm silly. I'm silly, I'm silly, I'm silly. There we go, Apple Workspace. Hey, check it. All righty, default, delete, 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 delete. Okay, so Apple works, bananas works. Now we have a workspace. Um, yes, Cookify, SWE, you're totally right. It was the, I had it on the wrong parentheses. We did the find, then we need to access the name here. So with that, we see that bananas workspace is good. Apple Workspace is good. Okay, excellent. So now we actually basically have a functioning workspace for our pages. So uh, let's see, ability to open workspace pages. That's basically what happened. Excellent. All right, so let's check out main. Again, let's assume we did all the things. And then, okay, now we need to actually do the actual board. <laughs> That's um, the part that we're gonna try to do in the next basically five minutes at a high level. So what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna basically really just scaffold this. So I'm gonna, inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and just code directly on, on main just to save us some time. But what I wanna do here is I'm gonna say board list. And so it's an array of, and then inside of the boards we'll go into, so basically here we'll say v dash board in board list where the key is a board dot ID. And then inside of here, we're just gonna say board dot name. So again, just to be quick with this, choo, 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 choo. actually, we're just gonna create the board. We're gonna, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Looping through the board is fine, but actually what I wanna do is just create the board itself. So let's see, board. The board is an object that will contain columns, which will be an array, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so to show you what I mean by that is, let's see, we'll have a name. So let's just call it test right now. So we'll have a section on the page that contains an h2 of the board.name. 
So here now we should see whoa, what happened. Apple click test is on here. So now we go here and do cherries save. There you go. It's good. And then we need the ability to create columns. So create column goes here. And then we're, this is where we're going to have the individual divs that actually they're list technically because every column is going to have a list. So where we're going to V4 item in uh, column items. Just ignore me for now. I'm just scaffolding some ideas here. And then the item will be here. Create column. OK. So creating a column basically allows us to create a couple of things. So this will be, oh, you know what though? I don't even need to do this. So here we go. How do we see that we have a column? So I'm just going to say um, board column here. And just to show that it works, we're going to do board column. And this will be uh, basically, we'll say border uh, one pixel solid. Again, let's do it black. Let's go ahead and just give it a height of 80 VH width of 100 pixels. Let's save that real quick. There you go. That's one. And then how do we know how many columns we have? Well, this will be a div of what I will call the class column grid. Again, not the best naming convention right now, but we're going for time over this. And so display grid, but then we'll do grid column do, 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 template. Wait, grid template. Grid template columns, that's what I want. And then we'll repeat for every one FR for five times. Oh, wait, wait, it should be the other way. Five times one FR. Okay. So if this works as I expect, theoretically, if we copy this five two times, you'll see it here. Three, okay, great. So that way we have three columns. And then let me just go ahead and do a margin right of one rem. Okay. But this is not how this would work. You would create the column manually. And so the way I'm going to do this is for every one of the board column, right, in the number of columns here, we'll say v4 board column in board.columns. Uh, I really don't like that. Also, I'm saying columns so many times now that it's starting to lose some meeting. All right, so it doesn't have anything in here yet. And if we go ahead and click to create the column, Inside of here, we'll have a method of create column. And then this will be uh, this dot board dot columns dot push. And then this time we'll just say items just like that. So now if we create, there we go. One, two, three. Okay. But the question is, well, what do we do when we have like more columns than, you know, so right now it's hard coded, right? So imagine if I only repeated this twice you'll see that our columns are across. And really, we want our CSS to be dynamic to however many columns we're creating inside of um, the app. And so the way I'm going to solve this problem is we're going to go ahead and we're going to v-bind this variable. This is the part that we want to be dynamic. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, board.columns.length. And then that should be it. So we save and ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Apple, there we go. All right, so you show you this works. Something is not happy, but we're gonna go ahead and inside of my body, Nux default, here we go. Inside of our column grid here, you'll notice now that when we create it, do do, You'll see that there's this variable column length. And then when we did this, oh, it did work. OK, excellent. Where is that being defined now? Oh, anyways, but here it is. And so you can see here that it's dynamically being increased as we add columns. And so if you didn't know, this is the new vbind style syntax from Vue 3.2 that, as you can see, is already uh, inside of Nux3, as we would hope. So this way, we're allowing users to determine how many columns we don't have to worry about how many it is because we're going to utilize JavaScript to update a CSS variable, which will then update everything else accordingly, which honestly is an absolute beautiful way to deal with this. So that's that. And then, all right, so feature wise, what we've done is we've added the ability to create columns on board in uh, Workspace. And then the last thing we need to do in the two minutes that I have left 
is inside of every column grid, there would be a button to create a card. So as you can see, whoa, that is so big. Okay, that's not great. So we're just gonna do create card just like that. And then this would also then, you know, I'm gonna switch this out from a uh, UL to just a div. And actually, you know what, what's better? This is probably just a section. It's probably a little bit more accurate. And then once we have that, li, li, it did not like that. Oh, sorry, section should go here. Now we have a list of stuff. And then we can say for item in, okay, so now we're in board column in column column uh, so item in column dot items and then the key will be item dot id this is where we can then say the item dot name so then we have an input here that is a v model on a new uh, card item like that so then we can say the V model here is new card item, which is a string. But then when users, they click to create the card, this will then say, ah, well, create card. We'll go ahead and say this, ooh, how do I do this? This create card actually needs to take in the specific column though, because otherwise we're going to have a problem. So I believe we can take in a specific column in here. And then we can say column.items.push. And then we'll, again, we'll just do ID name. And the name is new card item. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to find out. So then we we'll say test. Uh, new card item is not defined. New card item is defined. What do you, uh, da, 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 da. Nope, new card item is right there. Oh, I'm silly this dot new card item save okay so go back home apple click create column test yes it worked item create you can create this one apple oh well that's funny i had tied too many reactive things but hey check it that's that is, we have the ability to create items. Hey, I see Jason is rating. Hello, everyone. How is it going? We are, for those who are joining, we are building a Trello MVP using, building a Trello MVP using Nux3 public beta, where we have a basic homepage that allows you to create different workspaces. And then you can open them up to create columns. And then you can create, a, a, like basically, again, this is why I say Trello MVP. Very little styling and the functionality is just basically there, but we have our styles being created dynamically for us using the new view 3.2 syntax where you can bind JavaScript, just a little bit of JavaScript to your CSS, which is very exciting because then you utilize CSS variables. And so, man, okay. So we have something pretty good here. So again, I know I flew through that because again, this is like, this is build with Ben. So sometimes you see, this is like my prototyping brain when I'm going through and just like, just want to make sure things work first before I get too complicated with things. So this feature here, I would say feature users can now add card items to their columns. So let's see, there are people, okay, I'm looking at the, the chat. So for those wondering what I'm coding on, so this is the new MacBook Pro 14 inch that has the M1 Max chip, 64 gigs of RAM and just tricked out. I think I got the max spec on everything except the hard drive. That one is only two terabytes because I do, I mean, I'm here streaming. So for those who don't know, I do lots of video content and I found that one terabyte at this point doesn't really quite do the trick anymore. So hence the, the, the upgrade to two terabytes. And so, yeah, so yeah, so this is the, this camera here is the built-in webcam. And honestly, I am really happy with it. I know that my DSLR that's mirrorless and beautiful bokeh effect at home is, is very, very good. But for remote travel and not having to carry another webcam, although, and to be honest, I bought webcams where I don't think the quality was nearly this good. So, you know, kudos to the hardware team for making such a nice camera. So yeah, I see Bendy Miners <laughs> crew checking in. Hello, hello everyone. Okay, 
So, let me see. Let me go ahead and check something real quick. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and actually go ahead and run. Could we? Let me, let me. Okay. Okay, great. Now, uh, a couple things we need to fix, though, is that now that we have the ability to actually add cards, we'll notice there is a bit of a bug right now where the ability to create cards, and honestly, this input is bothering me. So hang on a sec, board column, board column input. Let's just fix that real quick. So if we do board column input, I would, I would create a CSS class name if really needed, but hopefully this should do, this input should do the trick. Oh, it really doesn't like that when I do it. I wonder why that's breaking, but I am working with a beta, so it's curious. So this here is really interesting. Oh, I know why, because of that. Okay, because I had hard-coded a pixel. So now if I create another column, there we go, there we go. Now it's perfectly in line. I was gonna say, why is it doing that? Okay, so per what our talking, our, like one of the discussions today was about basically like git commit message philosophy. And so I'm a big believer of like having a commit message for the most, like the biggest bang for buck of like the code that you change. And so people can look through history and sort of at least start to pay, like figure out where things change rather than like mass commits that have so many different lines of code that it's really hard to either undo, to undo cherry pick or whatever. So now I think about it, I might not even need this CSS, I just realized. So that might not even be necessary. The bug, I really need to know why it's doing that. That's kind of annoying. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so we're good. So what I'm gonna do here now is just go ahead. This is the minimum viable fix. As you can see, it's just one thing. And then, so what I'll do here is I'm gonna stage this for commit. And then this is a fix, although I personally have started getting used to saying bug fix rather than just fix, because fix is the same letter as feature for F. I guess fix does work because it's a little bit shorter, but okay, so we'll just do fix for now. And then I'll say input, resolve input overflow issue. That's really what we fix, right? While you can say that, you know, remove hard coded value, that's a very literal way of saying what changed. Really, it's the input overflow that kind of made us notice this was a problem. So now that we have this, we have the ability to create cards and everything. This is where the next bug comes in. You'll notice that all of these things have their own new like input bit. That is not good. No bueno. Why is that happening? So the reason that's happening is because we created an input for every board column, which is correct, but we've tied it to a generic data property here at the very top which is new card item. And what we really need is it for it to be specific to the instance. And so in other words, we need every single column when it's pushed to come with a couple of things. In addition to the item, we actually need a, a basically new column, sorry, sorry, new item uh, name. That's really all it is. And so every, every one of those things needs its own separate instance. And so all we need to change actually is to say we're identifying here the column, so column.newCard or new item name, that's what I called it. All right, new item name, right? So now that I save that, if we create the columns here, one, two, three. Apple is good, bananas is good, and cherries is good. And now we can create the card, although now it's not, oh, I know why it's not liking it. It's because inside of our method here, where we go ahead and create the card, we're looking for a new card item, which no longer exists. What we're actually looking for is the new item name property that's inside of the column that we pass in. So if we do column.newItemName this time, just like that, create, 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 and then apple, and then create, you can see that works, bananas. Create, that's good. Cherries, create, excellent. So now we have individual items. And then just because I think this is a default feature that's not really worth doing a whole, com actually no, let's just keep it simple. So now that we've fixed this, let's go and commit that. That's nice and simple. So there we go. Uh, that looks clean to me. So that would be a fix. And the fix on here is the fact that basically, let's see remove dependency on a single reactive data property for creating new card items. That's basically what we did. Now, just to tidy this up a little bit, we're going to say if column.newItemName is true, basically, 
then we do this stuff. Otherwise, we're not going to create an item because we saw there's an inadvertent bug here that we created a new item and we really don't want that. So if I save this now, create my columns, I should be able to click nothing happens. ASDF, that's good. SFDC, that's good and good. So that is another fix. I'm honestly just going to commit that small thing just like that. And so this is the fix for preventing users from creating empty items. And then the only other thing I think I needed to fix right here is we need to actually reset the actual item name. So column.newItemName equals empty string. So to show that this works now, let's go in Apple and there we go, create. Oh, that did not work as I thought it might. Let me refresh that real quick. Apple, here we go, create, create, create. Apple, create, ah, there we go. Okay, that was just a caching thing. Bananas, cherries, excellent. So that's resetting exactly as we want. So just like that, we have another feature that we've added. Feature reset new card item input. There we go. And the last thing I want to do just to make things really easy is that on the input, when we go ahead and input it, we don't have to click enter card. We can also do a key up dot enter and that will go ahead and run a create card on the column. So just like that, we have that. And then let me go ahead and actually just move that down. So it's a little bit cleaner. And so to show that this works, I can now do ramen. Oh, wait, did that not like it? Reset, create item column, column item name. Okay, let's go ahead and let's say berries now and then create, create, create. Ramen, enter, there we go. Bento, okonomiyaki, enter, excellent. That works exactly as we want it to, which is excellent. So I got another feature, commit feature, and the feature here is allow users to use enter key to create cards in the Trello board. Okay, now that we have this, we actually have a fairly decent, like this is fairly good now, like if we have like a carrot board, now uh, carrot. Why does it say cherries though? That's interesting. What is this cherries coming from? That's really interesting. Cherries. Oh, the board name is hard coded. Oh, wait a second. Why did I hard code the board name? Mounted this dot board name. Nope. Why did I do this? Oh, board dot name. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's when I was going to dynamically define the board. I was going to say, why does that cherry thing exist? Okay. Then that's a quick refactor. That's code that doesn't need to exist right now. So ref no chore clean up unused code. That's that. Excellent. All right. Carrot workspace here. Berries. Excellent. So let's see if this saves this home berries. So this did not cache, which makes sense because we aren't doing any state persistent, which is totally fine. Okay. Excellent. All right. Now the real question is where can we really go from here? I mean, technically now you can start doing things like tracking things. So we have here, we have the ability to create. So we have three columns. So again, apple, banana, cherries. So theoretically, you probably want the ability to move cards between them. That's your next bit. And so that's really a matter of, yeah, I mean, we could run algorithms on that or like basically write ways to like move things around. But to be honest, I feel like this is a high, like a good high level stopping point for sort of showing you how like at a high level, how this could be architected using Nux3 to do some basic, like we have a home page, we have workspaces that contain different boards. And then the only other thing though, maybe the thing that would actually be helpful, I just realized is for us to go ahead and let me go ahead and bump this over to go ahead and actually make the card sustainable. I think, Mm, no, let's save that for another stream. So, okay, so noob dev here with a question. So for your commit message, you usually use feature chore bug and refactor. Yeah, so actually, you know what? Let's talk about that, I think, as a good way to kind of wrap it up because um, commit is in is the thing that I sort of gave me this sort of initial inspiration, to be honest. 
And so let me go ahead and drop this, or drop this, uh, let me put this in resources, and I'll drop this in the chat. So commit is then is like a way to really like enforce this style. But to be honest, basically the idea behind this is, let me see, commit is then, wait, here we go. Where's the documentation for commit is then? Here we go. Nope, I'm wrong. Commands in it, config, 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 config. Tutorials, writing commits, feature. Wow, you think they would make this easier? Oh, conventional commits. Here we go. Uh, new conventional commits. Oh, here we go. This is really what I wanted. Yep. Okay, so give me quick summary. Feature, fix, feature, fix, breaking, change, scope, body, specification. Oh my gosh. It used to, there used to literally be a list of the types. All right, so for the sake, because I apparently can't find it for whatever reason. All right, here we go. So basically, there is, some people are using the feet for feature. I guess that's okay. Honestly, I don't mind typing it fully out. So this is like a new feature, like a new functionality on the app. Then we have a fix or, in my opinion, bug fix. Um, again, depending on if you want to distinguish. I do like the fact that bug fix looks different. Uh, so bug fix here. So uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the shortcut in parentheses that people seem to be using. And so this here, as you can imagine, is to basically resolve undesired behavior in your app. Then there is refactor. That doesn't seem to get shortcutted. And so refactor at this point basically saying to no new feature, just optimizations on how the code is written or organized. And I realize as I'm saying this, I am actually gonna go ahead and create an Obsidian note for this. And so this will be commit, I'll just call it my commit philosophy inspired by committizen. Okay, so feature, again, we'll figure this out later, but this will give me a chance to possibly write a blog post or video on this at some point. So we said feature, right? That's the one. There is feature, there are bug fixes, there are refactoring. And then there are what we call, there are chores. Actually, no, actually, I'm actually a little bit on the fence by that one. Config. So configurations are one of those things that like, basically these are project level, how about I say? App changes that do not impact. Oh, okay, how about that impact dev workflow and not end user behavior. So for example, right, like adding TypeScript, you might consider a functional, like a feature to your app, but in my opinion, like enabling TypeScript, that's really more of a configuration thing. Your end user is not gonna know the difference whether or not you use TypeScript or not. That's config. What other config things? You know, you enable prettier, that's an example of config. Uh, so the other ones, so other things that some people will, honestly, let me see, feature, chore. Yeah, my, my okay, I guess chore is, is technically one. I'm, I'm a little on the fence about this one, but these are random tasks that have no real impact on the code base. So the chore is like the trivial stuff. So an example might be deleting hello world. If you were being like a true sort of like Git storyteller with your logs, then the chores are the things that they really don't impact your app either way. It's not really a configuration. It's not a refactor. It's not a bug fix, not a feature. It's like the other stuff. Like, honestly, I almost want to just call it miscellaneous because now you have this sort of like F, B, R, C, M, like the scanning is a little bit easier. And so I might call it these five, to be honest, because as we can see here, the reason why I'm a fan of this kind of commit style is because if we look at the log now, you'll see, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to push... Uh, GitHub repo open view. Oh wait, uh, GitHub repo view web. Da dun dun dun. All right. So check this out. If we look at all the commits here, what's really nice is you get a, a kind of a, a chance to see what happened when, and there really is a story of what happened. Oh, basically, what we did together today, from scaffolding the app all the way to like how I added the homepage, how I used TypeScript in the homepage. So you can see here that, again, the story is nice and concise, really simple. And if anyone was were to undo it, they know exactly what they're getting, which I think is incredibly powerful. So again, LangTS and the interface here, passing it in as I'm basically typecasting with that. And so this here to me is also a lot more useful for, to be honest, like when you're reverting code. 
And so when developers, I find, have a habit of lumping everything together, it makes it trickier to go in and change or sort of pick things out that need to be reverted or uh, basically deleted. And so for me, this sort of style of commits really helps with that kind of problem. And also jumping to specific points as well. And so uh, we tried our best really in this particular stream to be as concise as humanly possible, which is great. So I think the only other thing I want to do before wrapping up is let's go ahead and uh, deploy this actually, because I have a feeling I'll be coming back to this and working on it. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize a new project for this and create a new site with Netlify init. Go to Ben Codes and stream and then next next three Trello MVP. Great. And then yes, it looks like I am. This is my first time setting it up on this machine. Oh, did not like it. Here we go. There we go, I'm logged in. So now we can run npm run build dist. Yup, fine, created. Okay, so to show that this works, we should be able to see now if we've done npm ntl open. Dun dun dun. dun. Yeah, new dev. Thanks for the question. Like I said, I think it probably merits its own like mini lightning talk. I would love to at some point create like call it a dedicated YouTube video on explaining each one because I know that I'm probably doing some things that are kind of assumed at this point. And why is it doing that? All right, NTL open. Let's see if this works. Ah, oh, beautiful. So we can see here that it is currently being deployed. Uh oh, it broke. Why did it break? Could not resolve global this from pages. Okay, so this is gonna start to be a beta thing. Yup, I had a feeling. So the store is acting up, it seems. Because if we look here, it does work, but looks like we have something to fix on this. Test. Okay, that's totally fine. I'll fix that on another time. But thank you. Okay, so let's so let's try this out. So I'm gonna switch over. Switch back over to intermission. Okay. Well, that has been fun. I, I thought I could get, well, I could, we got a lot of it done basically within the hour time span, which is nice. And then went over a little bit of time for explanation. So I definitely think the 90 minutes is about, about the right pace for Build with Ben. So I'll make sure to keep that up in the future. But it's been an absolute pleasure having you all. Um, once again, thanks Jason for the raid and for everyone stopping by. So with that, um, thanks everyone for hanging out today. Uh, I will see you all later. It's been fun. Bye.